Come on, culo. Zamboanga is probably the most culturally diverse city I've been to in the Philippines. Before the Spanish baptized at Zamboanga City in 1635 when they built what is now known as Fort Pilar, it was home to the native Taosugs, Subanons, Samals, and Samas. It was then taken over by the Americans in 1899 with the help of local revolutionary forces where they established a city hall that still stands today. In all those years, there have been many conflicts against Moro pirates, the British, and later on with various militant groups. Dubbed Asian's Latin city, it's remained primarily Christian on an island that is known to have a strong Muslim presence, but has managed to keep its diversity alive. Vamos a Zamboanga. Vamos! Vamos. Diego, yo, and Zamboanga. I don't know if that's right, but welcome to Zamboanga. Let's go. Hungary, our first stop was by Talmau. Barely out of the airport, and we're now going to be eating a lot of food straight into the kitchen. Uh, we are in a restaurant that specializes in Moro cuisine, which is kind of like a mix of all the different cultures that are found mostly in Mindanao. We have a nice little sampler. We're going for some chicken pianga again because I love it so much and it's gonna be delicious. And mommy showing us all her secrets right here. Here you'll find dishes that you rarely see in Manila and I was so happy to discover new flavors. From Tiulia Itum, a Taosug dish consisting of soft beef with a black soup of burnt coconut, chicken piangan, where marinated chicken swims in a dark burnt coconut sauce, or their version of a spicy mi goreng. The next morning, we woke up famished and heard of the lines building up in front of a local sati vendor. A delicacy around these parts that takes root in the Javanese satay, but that has grown into its own dish. Chicken, beef, or liver are grilled to perfection before being smothered into thick red gravy and served with puso, or wrapped rice. Alright, so we're at Johnny's satay. This is a thing that, it's a delicacy that a lot of people eat in the morning here. Obviously, if you know satay from the region, it's it's, you can find it in various different forms in various different Southeast Asian countries. Here it's very different because it's kind of like this orangey red sauce. There's apparently 14 spices in it, which is why a lot of people don't actually make it at home because it's very laborious. Um, served with some beef this time, really, really tiny, cute little beef skewers. Um, lots of sauce, uh, some hardened kind of clumped up rice. Um, and it just is full. And I'm loving this like 60s music. <laughs> Plastic chairs, wooden table, it's so sexy. I love starting my mornings like that. All right, so let's try it out. Damn. That's good. We normally go for the sauce first. So it's less about the meat, it's yeah. more about the sauce. That's what she said. After our hearty meal, we headed off to visit Santa Cruz Island, probably one of the most famous tourist attractions right next to the city. But before taking the boat, we went through a thorough environmental briefing. Safety is always first. Tatanggalin ang lahat ng klase ng bag bago isuot yung life jacket. Lahat ng pasahero po ay dapat nasa loob. Ang labas kasi ay tubig. So please stay sa loob. Thank you po sa lahat. Good morning. Boarding procedure will now start.
right, so I was kind of scared because he was very really authoritative. So when he said boarding, I came onto the boat right away. Um, so yeah, that was a master class in tourism in like 10 minutes. Honestly, that's probably one of the best I've heard. Um, it really makes you feel like you should follow the rules. And he told you like all the do's and don'ts, talks about environmental policies, um, gives you the regulation numbers, um, tells you whatever plastic you bring in, you bring out. If you don't, he said, I don't care. Uh, we're not Pinoy mentality here. You can't say sorry for something. We're still going to say sorry and we're going to charge you 5,000 pesos, 10,000 pesos, 15,000 pesos. And we're going to make you do community service. And we're going to keep you, uh, if you drink, we're going to keep you at the army camp until you sober. Up. I love it. It's exactly how things should be done and all the protected areas in the Philippines should be approached like that. There should be a carrying capacity. People should be educated before going to the island to protect the beauty that we have. Super important. I, I, didn't even, I thought this was going to be a food video, but I didn't even expect to have something like that. Amazing. The beach gets its pink hue from red pipe organ corals that erode into tiny particles which mixes in with the white sand. So this is beautiful Santa Cruz Island. This is the bigger Santa Cruz Island. Over there you've got the smaller Santa Cruz Island and what they're really famous for is their pink sand. It's more kind of like a subtle pink hue but you really do see it and you just have to wait for the light to hit in a certain way to really get that pink if you're trying to take pictures and everything. Um, and it's a gorgeous place, like it's really well kept, it's super clean because of all the rules that they've implemented. Um, so we're gonna chill here for a bit, then we're gonna go inside to the lagoon, check out some stingless jellyfish, um, and then apparently we're gonna go forage for some food in the sea, so let's see how that pans out. Just been roped into a boat race. Yes, no, I will be the navigator or navigator, so I'm blindfolded. I really can't see anything. This is gonna be interesting. It's it's really short, but without seeing anything, you don't really know where to kind of put the pressure. Let's go. So we won apparently. I didn't see the race, but we won. Good job. The yellow boats are managed by the community that lives not too far away from the Pink Beach. They are from various islands around the Sulu Sea and have settled here a few generations ago to flee conflict. Nowadays, they're an integral part of the conservation and tourism efforts of the area. Walking around the beach, you'll notice lots of people eating sea urchins stuffed with rice and mangrove snails cooked in a stew called chupa culo. The name of the dish just shows how strong the Spanish influence was on Zamboanga. In fact, close to 70% of everyone who lives here still speaks Chavacano, a Spanish Creole language that's mixed in with some native languages. El Santa Cruz, Isla de Santa Cruz, como un uh, lugar que está protege kita y también uh, debe tener kita más regulación, tener kita uh, uh, leyes que debe seguir el mga visita desde el Sambuanga y también el mga visita desde el otro lugar. Okay, so the island of Santa Cruz is a protected area that we need to keep, right? And we need to make sure that there are rules and obligations that everyone has to follow from the Zamboanga locals, the tourists um, for coming from outside. Woo! Yeah! yeah! All right! <laughs> okay, now explain what chupa culo means. Because chupa means suck, right? Culo yeah. in Spanish is, is the butt. The butt. Right. So it's like suck my butt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Originally, it was called chupa culo because if you're gonna, if you're gonna suck the mollusk okay. from yeah. the bigger hole, if it's not coming out, you have to suck the butt. Okay. Ah. Chupa culo. Chupa culo. Okay. You need to suck the butthole. Okay. So it will somehow loosen. The, there's a track inside, and then you're gonna again suck it. The bigger, the bigger hole. Then there you go. Your Everything voice is so out. sensual that I can picture it in my mind. <laughs> I wanted to see the hard work that goes behind preparing these dishes, so we went off into the mangroves to see how they're caught. So we're going deeper and deeper into this kind of like marshland forest. Well, right now the tide's low, but apparently the tide gets up here and this gets flooded. 
a um, bunch of crab rolls holes here, um, and this is where also they find snails. I just didn't expect we were going this deep in. <laughs> you're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> You can think of a lot of squishy brown things, just don't think about it. And it's sharp too. Okay, she is literally blowing me out of the water. This is not the easiest place to walk. It's mud, ow. <laughs> There's some really sharp corals underneath, some mangrove spikes that you don't feel. And she's just going 30 kilometers an hour, and I'm going like five kilometers an hour. Uh, but she's able to catch a couple of these snails already. Oh, that's painful. Look at her. She's like twice my age and kicking my ass. That's why the sea is there. Yeah. Julia goes out um, every day basically, and then she basically fills out that bucket that we saw a while ago. It'll probably take her hours to do it, and they have to go deeper where the water is kind of like higher. Um, they then have to bring that back to the community, which is far away. Um, cook it and then sell it on the beach and that whole bucket costs, costs 125 pesos, which is crazy for how, how much work that is and how difficult it actually is. Um, so I'm actually excited to see, well right now it doesn't really look appetizing, so let's see if we can magic it a little bit. After that I jumped into the water with some fishermen to look for some fresh sea urchins. Once cleaned up, we headed to shore to cook it all up. To make oko oko, the sea urchin is first cleaned. The rice is then seasoned before being stuffed back into the shells and steamed. The mangrove snails need to first rest and be purged for a couple of days before being consumed. Once ready, they are fried off in a coconut curry-like preparation. While these were being finished off on the fire, the locals asked me if I wanted to try my hand at sailing a local Vinta. Going off on this traditional boat, the wind's actually helping now, it's actually working properly. This is awesome. Little did I know, the wind was not in my favor. I could have gone off to Basilan at this rate. Even the fisherman that joined me after couldn't get us back to shore. Heat up now, and that's him hanging. We make our way back to the beach. All is good, all is fine. Not gonna get lost in the sea. Okay, everything's ready. I didn't do any of the hard work. I just get to eat it as usual. Is there any way to open this, like, particularly? Um, crack it like a <laughs> So the tongues basically stay intact, and then there's just kind of rice covering it. And then the rice obviously was been flavored, so that's what makes it really kind of like interesting. I'll break it. Do I bite it, or do I just take it off? Just bite it. So the sea urchin flavor actually really comes through. Fancy knife. Sarap. Mercy, I can't see it. It's good, it's really simple. 
It tastes kind of like a, like a Japanese onigiri almost, and then that uni flavor just comes right at the bottom, which is really nice. Next, the famous chupacula. No. So I just suck it, yeah? Yeah. This side? This side. They're all laughing at me. There's, you don't see them, but there's a huge audience behind me, behind you. Oh, there it is. It's that one. That's good. Ah. Ah. It's a wrap. The coconut, the ginger, really makes sense. Kind of like a like a coconut curry almost. And this is fern. Delicious, like super fresh. And it's funny, you'd think you'd suck it from this side, but you suck it from this side. Hence the reverse name. Come on, culo. So the part you remove is this one or this one? Here. That. Ah, yeah, 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 the cover. Got it. This is a biscuit, guys. That's delicious. That's actually one of the best things I've tried so far. There's lots to see in the city, and if you're looking for people to take you around this area, please contact Zamboanga I Travel Tourist Lane. Their link is in the description box below. There were two other dishes that lots of people recommended. One called bachoy, which is very different from the one from Iloilo and closer to a laksa, but it was too far away for us to make it. And secondly, the curacha at Alavar. An extra large kuracha was served in front of us, covered in the sweet, thick alivar sauce that will always leave you wanting for more. I was really craving for dessert, um, and I wanted to check out Knickerbuckers, uh, which are basically like a hala hala with some fresh fruit. This is a hala hala place. I'm not sure if this is a Knickerbucker, but there is some fresh fruit inside, and it's delicious. Um, and I just wanted to say, like I know, I know a lot of people have been talking about how it's probably unsafe in Zamboanga. Um, I, I don't know if they're referring to Zamboanga City, um, but Zamboanga City honestly is one of the most culturally diverse places I've ever been. Um, in the Philippines. It's such a beautiful place. There's so much to do. People are so friendly and so nice. I did not feel unsafe at all walking around the city taking tricycles and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I just feel like it's a place that everyone should discover. It's way down in the Philippines, way down in the south of Mindanao, and it's such a special place where just so many cultures congregate. Um, and yeah, it's possibly one of my favorite cities. Like, if, if I've, I've been to a lot of towns and cities in the Philippines and, you know, places usually feel, you know, highly, with lots of concrete, high density, really kind of uh, tight and full of people. Here it's kind of wide and there's lots, you know, lots of restaurants, lots of little pockets happening. It feels spacious. Um, so if you do have the chance, come to Zamora. I'm going to finish my ala ala.